What if I told you that one gun made back in the 70s completely changed the firearm industry to what it is today, creating a completely new category of firearm? That's right, the Heckler & Koch VP70 gave birth to the era of polymer pistols. And anyone who still thinks that Glock was the first polymer pistol, the VP70 predates it by a minimum of 12 years. Almost more amazing than that is the fact that HK decided to launch the Volks pistol, or People's Pistol, in a time when most people would really much rather have a revolver than any pistol. You could kind of look at the VP70 as the grandfather to all modern pistols, like the Glock, Springfield XD, Smith & Wesson M&P, and a slew of others. Another thing all these pistols borrowed from the VP70 is the striker-fired system. Without this one pistol, the firearm industry would look very different today. Here's the technical stuff. The HK VP70 is a 9mm double action only direct blowback handgun that's fed by an 18 round double stack magazine. 18 is high capacity by today's standards and it was nearly unheard of in the 1970s when this gun was introduced. It was primarily produced in two forms, the VP-70Z, which is the civilian semi-auto version, and the VP-70M for military use. This version was capable of firing three round burst at a mind-numbing 2200 rounds per minute. This firearm also came with a very unique stock that doubled as a holster, and the selector switch for the burst fire was on the stock. Even though the military version of this firearm was a very intriguing and flexible package, it never really caught on with any major militaries of the time. A couple of interesting design features of the VP-70. First off, the front sight isn't a traditional post like most other handguns. It has a ramp milled into the slide with a notch in the center. The sides of the ramp are polished and the notch isn't, so this gives the appearance of a standard front sight. It also has a cross-block safety behind the trigger, a European-style mag release, and a kind of takedown lever that was very unique at the time. This made taking the gun apart very easy and it could be done without tools. Thanks to its futuristic looks, the Heckler & Koch VP70 has also been seen in a fair share of movies, television shows, and video games. Movies such as Aliens and Payback, as well as video games like the Resident Evil series, along with many other examples, have all featured the VP-70. The grip of the HK VP-70 is surprisingly slim considering the high capacity. In my opinion, it's much slimmer than most modern polymer pistols. It's also got a nice weight to it. It's lighter than all the steel guns contemporary to the VP-70, but slightly heavier than the polymer guns of today. Ergonomically, the gun works okay. The two quirky things that kind of stick out are the cross-block safety, it's just weird on a pistol, and if you're not accustomed to the European-style mag release, this will take some getting used to. So what's it like shooting the VP-70? Well, yeah, it's kind of like that. For me at least, the huge drawback of the VP-70 is the 20-pound trigger. And we're not talking about a smooth 20 pounds either. It's a long, crunchy, double action only 20 pounds. So that's it, the HK VP70. It's not the greatest pistol of all time, but it did change the firearm industry completely and mold it into what we have today. Gaston Glock may claim that he didn't look at any other pistols when he designed the Glock, but there are just too many similarities to say that he didn't take a peek at the VP70. So love them or hate them, you now know who to thank for all the polymer pistols.